again and welcome back to our course on Access 2019. In this module we're going to start to look at queries in more detail. So first of all, what are queries and why do we have them? Now first of all, in all databases, looking for something can take some time. So for example, in the Esprit de Tour database, this might have thousands of tours, and if you want to find a tour that satisfies certain requirements, such as the price was within a range or it went to a particular country, then it could take quite a long time to find the correct trip or tour. So what a query enables you to do is to specify the criteria, and then it will find for you the database objects, which in the case of the Esprit de Tour database might be a trip or a tour, to find the ones that satisfy the criteria. Another advantage is that if the information you want is not in one table, but in several tables, the query can join together the information from different tables and present you with only the details you want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to make queries and also how to understand queries that Access can make for you. So let's start by creating a very straightforward query. I'm going to go up to the Create ribbon, and I'm going to go to the Queries group and Query Design. So now what you essentially have here is a query window with two different parts. And just hovering over the top of that, we have this Show Table dialog box. So the first thing we need to do is to select the table or tables that you want to query from. Now you'll notice that there are three tabs at the top here, so you could also specify a particular query to query from, or you can choose both. Now we don't currently have any queries, so there's nothing in there, so even when we click on both, it's just really showing us our different tables. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the trip table, to the query window. So I'm going to select it and click on the add button. And then I'm going to close the show table dialog box. Now in the panel I have added, I can see each of the fields within the trip table. So all I really need to do is to drag the field or fields I want to retrieve down onto the grid. And the grid is kind of in the bottom half of this window and it's called the query by example or QBE. Some people refer to it as a QBE, but most of the time, the most common way that I've heard it referred to is the grid. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag trip name onto the grid. So I have now essentially created a query. And once you've created a query, you can essentially run it. So I'm going to go up to the results group and you'll see we have a big red exclamation point there which says run. So let's run this query. And what has happened is that we've retrieved all of the trip names from the trip table. Now, we only got the trip names because that is always specified as our criteria. And you can see that those trip names are not in any particular order. In fact, they're just in the order of which the records are. So at the moment, I am looking at the results of running the query. I'm going to jump up to uh, Views. And you can see in here, now I have a view called SQL View. So let's switch in to that. An SQL view is the view that shows the query expressed as a structured query language or an SQL statement. And this is where you can kind of, if you're used to programming languages, this might look slightly familiar to you. So even if you're not, let's just read through it. So we can see here it says, select the tuple trip trip name from tuple trip. That is essentially what it's doing behind the scenes. And that's exactly what we got. We got all of the trip names from the trip table. Now, don't worry too much that this is on two separate lines. That really has no significance at all. In fact, I could come into here and I could click in front of from and just hit the backspace key. And it's really not going to make too much of a difference. If I was to click run again, you can see I'm going to get exactly the same results. So that is our first query that we've created, fairly straightforward. And of course, we can save it. So if I go to close this down, it's going to ask us to save, and I'm going to say yes. And I'm just going to call this uh, query test at this stage. So Q-R-Y test, and click on OK. 
And what you'll also see now is at the left-hand navigation pane, I now have an additional category added in for queries, and there is my query test. Now, one of the first things to get used to is that Access lets you work in SQL view or design view, and it keeps both up to date. So let's say I want to do some work on my query. I can right click, go into design view, and that essentially jumps me into SQL view. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to change this query in this view. So if I want to select a second field, I can separate it from the first with a comma. So if I click at the end of trip name here and I'm going to enter a comma, I'm going to specify the table. So it's the same table, tuple, trip. Dot. Now, really all I'm doing here is copying the one before, but I'm going to get it to pull out a different field name. So I'm going to get it to pull out the duration as well. So I'm going to say duration days. So that's the second field that I want to retrieve from the table. So what I'm hoping to see when I run this query is that not only am I going to get a list of the trip names, but I also want to see the duration in days. So let's check that that query works by clicking on run. And there we go. I have my trip name and I have the duration in days. So I'm fairly happy with how that's working. So now let's look at this in design view. So I'm going to go to view and switch to design view. And what you can see here in the grid is that we have two columns filled in at the bottom. So basically it's saying show the trip name and show the duration days from the trip table. So that's kind of how the design view and the SQL view are kind of kept in sync with each other. Now, generally speaking, in the grid, the first row contains a field name. And if you wanted all of the fields in a particular table, you can drag down this asterisk. So you can see here in the top half of the window where we have our tuple trip table, you can see a little asterisk here. So what I could do is grab that asterisk and drag it all the way down. So you can see now in the grid, I have this tuple trip asterisk, which is going to show me all of the fields in the trip table. Now, in this case, I don't particularly want that. So all I need to do is highlight that column and press the delete key to get rid of it. Now, the second row in the grid is the name of the table, and the third row enables me to specify a sort sequence. So if I click in the duration days column, in the drop down, I have sort ascending or sort descending. So I'm going to say ascending, and I'm going to run my query again by clicking on the run button. And now you can see that my trips have essentially been sorted by duration in ascending order. Now, if I go back to our SQL statement, so let's go to view and SQL view, you can see that we now have a new row. So it says order by tuple trip dot duration day. So it's specifying there the sort order. Now, if I wanted to change that sort order from ascending to descending, I could either go back and change it in the grid, or I can come into here and I can click just after where it says duration days and type in D-E-S-C. Let's run our query again. And there we go. You can see that they're now sorted in descending order. Let's jump back into design view. And if we look down in the grid, you'll see, in fact, that, that third row has now changed to descending. So again, that is the SQL view and the design view staying in sync. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is to introduce a third column. And we're going to include the activity level into this query. So I'm going to grab activity level. I'm going to bring it down to the grid. And we're going to introduce a criteria for this activity level. So you'll see that there's a row called criteria. I'm going to click in here and I'm going to say equals moderate. I want the trips whose activity level is moderate in descending order of duration. So let's run our query. And there we go. Now, I don't really want the word moderate listed over and over again. I don't really need that. 
So let's go back into Design View. And what we can do is we can uncheck the Show box. So what that means is that although I'm using Activity Level in this query, it's not going to show it. And let's click on Run. And there we go. So let's jump in and take a look at what the SQL looks like for what we have now. So what you can see now is that we have an additional WHERE clause that's been added in. So WHERE tuple trip activity level equals moderate. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add an additional piece of criteria. So in between these two round brackets, I'm just going to click in between them and press my space bar. So I'm going to say AND Tubal trip duration days is greater than 10. So now I have two pieces of criteria and each criteria is in a pair of round brackets. So both must be true. And to tie them together, we have a pair of round brackets around the outside. Now I'm sure you can imagine the more things that you add, this can get very, very complicated. So sometimes looking at this in design view is a little bit easier. Now let's first run this query. And there we go, those are my results. So as I said, let's look at this in design view. And if we look down at the grid, what you can see here is duration and we're sorting it in descending, but we have our criteria added of greater than 10 days. So that can be a little bit easier to understand. We also still have our activity level set to moderate. Now, say that we don't require both of those to be true. If we don't, we might want to use an OR statement or an OR clause. So here we might want to say, show me all the trips where the activity level is moderate or the duration is greater than 10 days. So let's go back into SQL view. And all we would need to do is switch this AND statement for an OR. And let's run the query again. And there we go, we get a longer list this time. Let's go back into Design View one more time. And what you'll notice is a very slight change just here. So we now have our criteria on two separate rows. And you can see that it now says OR at the side. So it just helps you organise a little bit in your mind as to what exactly is going on. So that is really the very basic rules of queries. In the next section, we're going to expand on this and we're going to look at the next step up from queries, which is joins. So please, no pun intended, join me for that. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To get a free Microsoft Access 2019 course, including downloadable exercise files, click over there. and. Click over there to watch all the videos in this Access 2019 playlist.